within this video I want to talk to you all about the role of ATP in the body and it's probably fair to say that ATP is one of the most significant compounds, uh, chemical compounds that exists in biology and really what we're kind of interested in this product for is because we would describe it as the currency, the currency of all biological energy, of all biological energy. So that being understood, we should immediately recognize that if we want to move something, such as contracting a muscle, say, which of course what we're interested in when we think about sport and sport science, the only way that that can be done is through the process of ATP being broken down and releasing energy. So the only source of energy for movement, let me write this down for you, the only source of energy for movement is ATP. So it's the only source of energy for movement. Now, of course, we also use other energy stores and sources to actually provide us with ATP, but the only source of energy for movement is ATP. So all that being understood, we need to kind of get a bit of a rudimentary understanding of ATP, what it is, what it looks like, how it breaks down, and again, how we might actually rebuild it so that we can generate more energy or we can actually burn more energy for movement. So I'm going to ask you to take a bit of a leap of faith, really, to begin with, and I'm going to tell you, first of all, that we can represent ATP in the following way. First of all, we can have an adenosine group, an adenosine group, and those of you that are studying your kind of molecular biology, you probably recognize that an adenosine group is uh, an adenine um,